Glenn, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, we did it, Glenn, and you Thanks, played Charlie. a huge role as we persevered. I want to play a piece of tape, though, Glenn, uh, that I think you will appreciate, yeah. um, which is of our okay. mutual uh, now passed away friend, uh, Rush Limbaugh. And this was one of the last things he ever said. Mm. Let's play cut 328. We are not sunk yet. We will never surrender. We will never give up. Never, never, never. It's not who we are. It's not what we do. We never give up. Now, let's remember, everybody, that you. was right before Rush passed away. I, I do, too. But remember how dark things seemed then. Joe Biden and the Democrats controlled everything. And now let's just enjoy how we feel today. Glenn, welcome to the program. What are your thoughts? Thank you. Um, I, I feel, you know, Charlie, you've watched me and listened to me long enough to know and we know each other. I'm not usually a ray of sunshine. Uh, uh, and I think I was on your show last time I was on your show. I said, I can think of a million ways this goes wrong, but I can only think of one way that we survive this, that we come out and we're together. And that's God. We need a miracle. And I think we have a miracle. And um, that miracle came in many forms. First of all, the saving of Donald Trump, um, but also the, I think that was like a purifying moment for him. I think he had gone through so much fire, but I think it all just distilled at that moment. And the way he, the way he came together, he was the perfect candidate. I, I think he was uh, as good, if not better than Ronald Reagan. Um, he was uh, on target all the time. He was a happy warrior. Um, he pulled things off that nobody else could have pulled off. Um, he was very, very focused on what he needed to do. He put a fantastic team, including you and your team, around him. Uh, Laura Trump was a miracle. The first time I've ever felt yes. good about the GOP was this time. They, they can't get themselves out of a wet paper bag. Um, and this time, I mean, I had full confidence in them. And, um, you know, I called right away and Laura would be like, we're on it. We got it. We got it. Every time. So when Election Day came for the first time in my life, uh, I could say with confidence to my my audience, just call your local GOP. They're probably already in court with this, uh, but just let them know in case they don't know. Um, I mean, it was just a series of perfect timing uh, and uh, perfect execution. It, it was amazing, amazing. And, and, and we just must appreciate how the American people made the right decision. Glenn, we, when you were on the program last, we said this would be a question on, can the American people resist ferocious nonstop propaganda in a 90 day period? Yeah. And we passed the test. Yeah. W was COVID a was COVID a metaphorical Pearl Harbor moment where people will then look at the world differently after that in the sense where they're not going to take propaganda at the same weight. It's going to change their viewpoint completely. There, there is there is no going back to how things were. Do we have a population that is more skeptical so, of corporate power? That is more. Yeah, please. Your thoughts. Oh, yes. OK, so. Here's the thing, Charlie. First of all, I wouldn't put it in the category of Pearl Harbor or 9-11 because that was one event that happened one day and it changed everything. Fair. Um, this yes. was a slow drip. So maybe a 9-11 or a Pearl Harbor in slow motion. Um, it, sure. it started out slow, but it, it woke enough people up, not the entire nation, but it woke enough people up that were influencers for the other side. I look at the Weinsteins and, and people like that, uh, Lindsay, um, people that were, were really icons on the other side um, that started to go, wait a minute, I don't, I don't think I'm with them, but I'm not with the Democrats. This is lie, this is not freedom. Um, and that's what I think was the beginning of breaking everything apart. These people that were standing up and the average person saying, this is wrong. Um, I can't live this way. And that just slowly spreading. And then when you look at this now a few years later and you see everything that we said, everything that we said was right. 
It did start in a lab in Wuhan. We were involved. Uh, Fauci was making money. Um, they were in bed with the pharmaceutical companies. They were they were um, working with social media to silence people. All of that came uh, came undone. And that's the Pearl Harbor moment. If you could put it all together, that's the Pearl Harbor moment. And then on top of it, it started to trickle down onto everything. It, it, things were moving so fast. We had had enough time to check on all of the stories and see, wait a minute, you told us that that would happened. And we were conspiracy theories because we said it was the other way. And that was wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And people just started to realize they're lying to us all the time. Now, again, not the entire. I feel bad for the people that really, truly believe that Donald Trump is a Nazi, that women are going to be, you know, their heads are going to be on a pike or whatever they're saying today. Um, I feel sorry for those people who have been so grossly misled. They're, when they wake up, they're going to be very pissed uh, at the media and the left. But the best thing that came out of this, and about a week before he was on Joe Rogan, maybe a couple of weeks, because he hadn't agreed yet, and they were saying that maybe he's going to be on Joe Rogan. And I said, please let that happen, because that will be the end of the mainstream media, because he'll go on Joe Rogan and he'll get, you know, 100 million people to watch. And it will affect the election because he'll perform well. And every politician will say after this, why would I go do a debate on ABC or CBS that gets maybe exactly. 15, 20 million people and it's all set up, it's not real. When I could go on Joe Rogan and spend three hours, he'll ask me honest questions, I can be myself and let the people judge for themselves who I am. It's over, the mainstream media is over. This is this is exactly right. I want to play Joy Reid, who identifies the Joe Rogan experience element here. Let's play cut 330. Did exist was a massive media ecosystem pumping into the heart of MAGA, run by the Internet bros Elon Musk and Charlie Kirk of Turning Point USA, which this year handled much of the get out the vote operations for Trump's campaign, only for Trump to close it out with celebrity podcast host Joe Rogan in what would become Rogan's most watched episodes in more than a decade. But behind the curtain is disinformation king Elon Musk, who helped to elect Trump and enrich himself by using X Twitter oh my God. to um, out to do push out Twitter. his preferred candidate frequently with misinformation. And joining I just, I, I, I'm glad I want to let you loose on this, but look, just comment deeper oh. though. Lies do not stand in long form podcasting because they get cross examined. It gets flushed right. out. When we're in the pursuit of truth, mm -hmm. that format benefits us. Glenn Beck. So it not only benefits us, it is the um, it is the only way. It's why they want to stop us from talking to each other. It's why they've encouraged us to stop talking to our family. Uh, it's why they they've done their best to silence people on the other side. It, it's so funny because, you know, I was in the mainstream media and hated every second of it. Um, and they they said, you know, you just got to go online or something because you have no place here in the mainstream media. And I'm like, OK, that's fine. So I started the blaze, did my own thing. The first guy to come out and <laughs> and try to move a, a massive audience over. And when we did it and it was successful, then they realized, oh, crap. And then everybody else started doing it. I mean, Look at the power of the uh, podcast. It was coming anyway. Um, they and they just thought we'll we'll put all of these crazy people online because they thought they could control it at the time. But as as we're seeing in almost everything, we don't necessarily do these things because we're busy doing our life. We're not, you know, look at you. Who has ever on our side done a get out the vote campaign like you have done? Only the Democrats. But when they force us to do these things, we get better than they are quickly. And then, they, then they're like, oh, wait, wait, that's a problem. And then they Bingo. have to shut you down. 
You know, that is such it's, an it's just point. the same old record over and over again. What they don't understand is everything is about to change. And that's not just because of Donald Trump. That's because of AI, uh, quantum uh, computing, uh, everything. The life as we know it is going to change. And if we have somebody who understands freedom and understands that people are in charge, not the elites, we have a chance of withstanding the AI that is coming. But Donald Trump, and he knows this, has got to get in and take those big corporations uh, and bring them to heel on um, doing things like Google did on the, the day of the election. This, um, uh, this, this influencing people without knowing that they're being influenced. You know, one thing I haven't heard uh, from Donald Trump yet, and I really am anxious to ask him, um, is will you repeal the executive order that, that uh, Barack Obama put in that allows our spy agencies to use propaganda on our own people and our own citizens here in America? That got no press when Barack Obama did it. It's got to stop. All right, Glenn, we got five minutes. You can do it uninterrupted. Yeah. Ideas, personnel, creative things. The floor is yours. Okay, just uh, just off the top of my head here. I wasn't really prepared for this. Uh, do not put Jamie Dimon in as the Treasury Secretary or the head of the Fed. Um, you know, fight the Fed. Close the Fed would be even better, but fight the Fed on things. Um, put uh, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy as maybe the Treasury Secretary. He's not part of that system. Um, I'm afraid of another Jamie Dimon getting in there who would be... Um, you know, he's a, he's he's not a friend. He's not a friend. Um, we need to clean out the top level of the Pentagon. All of those generals up at the top there, they all came through the ranks because they're political players. Put somebody like Tulsi Gabbard in charge of cleaning house there. She doesn't have to be the secretary of defense, although she wouldn't necessarily make a bad one. But um, somebody that um, can come at it and is not a big conservative and everything else. This one is easy. All you have to do is look for the people who want to fight to win and those who want to play politics. Anybody play politics, get them out. Um, Elon should be on the cuts right now. He should have a copy of the budget right now and he should be looking at that. Um, uh, and Musk should also be play some role with the um, uh, with the deep cuts in regulations as well. I, I hope yes, Donald Trump yes, just takes, yes. like he did last time, I'd like to see it double. Just cut the regulations. He has, remember, we have a, an election in 2026. It's going to favor the Democrats no matter what we do. Um, and it's going to be hard to keep the Senate and everything else. So he really has two solid years. But remember, Ronald Reagan, when he started this, it wasn't really until 83, 84, where everything really started to show up and be good. Uh, so he may not have, you know, the best story to tell in two years unless he gets everything done in his first hundred days and he can juice the economy. The way to juice the economy is to cut regulation um, cut all of this crap that everybody has to go through. He should fire all those 80,000 IRS agents. He should, uh, I am actually, I, I am, I am actually willing to listen and probably could support if he could make the numbers work on going back to the way we were abolishing the 16th amendment, uh, getting rid of income tax. If he can't get rid of the income tax, then he should make it so low. Remember, um, Coolidge cut our income tax by 50% and cut the regulation and all of the spending by 50% in the first year. The second year, he came in and did it again, cut it by another 50%, and that gave us the roaring 20s. He should be looking yes. at the Coolidge kind of cuts in both taxes and uh, in spending and regulation like Coolidge did, just take a hatchet to it because that will bring the economy roaring back. We don't need a, a 25 or a 21% uh, income tax rate. We need at the most a 15% uh, 
uh, income tax rate. I, I, again, am for abolishing it, but if the numbers would work. Um, let's see, uh, uh, we talked about this earlier today. Um, I'm for the Mike Lee plan of J.D. Vance being the head of the Senate. Uh, Thune couldn't be, uh, you know, if he won't go with Tim Scott, then it it, it should be uh, J.D. Vance because those other two would be an absolute nightmare. Uh, I really took him at his word when he said, we'll shut down the, DO, uh, the uh, Department of Ed. I, I'd like to see that and a few others. RFK yes. being in charge of, RFK being in charge of making America healthy again. I think this is brilliant. I wouldn't put him in charge. I would have him, you know, have a real effect on suggestions. The only reason why I'd say don't put him in charge is I'm not sure he's right on everything. But when it comes to big pharma, when it comes to all of that, when it comes to the FDA, he's 100% right. FDA is worthless. 